So you want to learn the elusive secrets to becoming a millionaire since we're all striving to do better in our financial life? Stay tuned, we're going to show you how to do it. What's good, YouTube? It's the all-knowing, all-loving, all-feeling, all-seeing, all-powerful, just damn all everything, sexy as hell host of the Life Games channel and the Rated R YouTube superstar. And in the sexy as hell hot seat, we have a guest, my wife, Dr. Crystal Tyson. And what would you like to say about this segment we're going to cover today, talking about getting people to millionaire status? I want to be a millionaire too. Oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> She's fooling with y'all. She married millions when she got with the rated R YouTube superstar. She gonna be all right. But for the average person, we're all chasing trying to better our financial situations and we make huge pitfalls and sometimes we make some gains. But the average person has misconceptions about how to get rich. And we see this a lot in our community. We're African Americans. We wanna try to empower that knowledge of what they can do. So we're going to start by just letting you know what the average millionaire is doing to attain their wealth. Crystal, we have a diagram on the sexy as hell jumbotron for you to read to the fans. So what do most millionaires have in common? There are a lot of misconceptions out there about millionaires. In reality, there are two factors that many millionaires define as having investable assets of $1 million or more have in common. They tend to be highly educated and have earned their wealth rather than inheriting it. So, point number one, get as much education as you can. We just got a president that won based on folks who were quote unquote, poorly educated. They're scared of the reins of technology taking over and turning into the world. Guys, you've got to continue to educate yourself just so that you can have more money coming in that you can save. Those revelations are courtesy of a study from BMO Financial Group, a private wealth bank. BMO wanted to know their custom wanted to know their customers, so they surveyed people with investable wealth of several million dollars in Florida. The Sunshine State typically has the most wealthy individuals per state because there is no personal income tax in Florida. I wish North Carolina would get rid of income taxes so we could save that money. So what percent of millionaires with investable wealth inherited their wealth? 3%. So we got to dispel that myth, guys, and we all have. A lot of us think that millionaires, they had it passed down from their parents or they just ran it, fell in their lap. Hell, it, look, it don't happen like that. Now, there are a lot of people that obtain wealth through some very grimy schemes. Like if you want to go out there and make a Kim Kardashian sex tape, if you want to do a Ponzi scheme, that's unrealistic. But at the end of the day, the average American is not going to attain wealth in that manner. And this just debunks some of those old myths. More education, more saving. And I got a chart for y'all that's going to show you different tiers of what you need to be saving at different age groups to help you get going. Let's finish up, honey. What percent didn't go to college or dropped out, like the stereotype of the techno geek who can't cope with school and strikes out on his own to make millions? Mm-hmm, keep going. Just 8%. 8%, all right. In fact, people with advanced degrees make up 54% of those who become independently wealthy. Keep getting those advanced degrees, ladies and gentlemen. And getting an education doesn't necessarily mean you have to get an advanced degree. It could also mean you go back and re-educate yourself on something like technology. Re-educate yourself on something like computer programming. Maybe re-educate yourself on how to do social media to help your business. It doesn't always have to be higher education, but you have to strive for more education. There are always exceptions, the people who follow their own drum. But for most, education is the starting point and then having the vision to fulfill your own destiny as an entrepreneur is the goal, is the logical path to millionaire status. Yep. Don't be afraid to take a risk on owning a business. When you save up enough money, put yourself in position, take a risk. Now that is a legitimate risk that can take you to the next level if you can get that business to pop. Now we're gonna show you guys a chart. This right here is a chart of what you need to be saving each and every month at different age groups, but you have to start out with a minimum investment of about $10,000. That can be spread through Roth IRAs, 
SEP IRAs, um, target market accounts, whatever investment you use that can earn you 7%, which is the national average over the course of a year. So what's the first one, honey? You said $10,000, like that's a light statement. That's a lot. It's a lot of money, <laughs> but it, it, it's a lot of money. But if you live below your means, and what we see in our communities is people living above their means, getting credit for cars that you can barely afford, um, buying the, the newest clothes, you got to have the newest pair of Jordans, mm -hmm. and they get those things every two or three months, some mm -hmm. of that stuff. So if you reduce that money and start putting aside $300, you can make some of these things happen. You know, It's just a matter of what's important to you. you know, a lot of people can't see saving money from the age 20 to 65 to become a millionaire because you want it now. But at the end of the day, what's practical is you have to live for today, but you got to plan for tomorrow. And just knowing saving and having that money somewhere is a great, great umbrella to protect you from those rainy days. So first one. Okay, so for a 25 year old who wants to be a millionaire by the age of 65, they have mm -hmm. to set aside $300 a month. That's $10 a day for the rest of their working life. And you know that's hard as hell for somebody that young. Most of them wet behind the ears, don't know nothing. I mean, there are some people who all they get is a $300 check a month. So it, it is important that if you fit that category where that's all you're making, try to save something out of it. If Force yourself to save $5 or force yourself to save 10% of whatever you're making to start getting into the habit to turn it up whenever you get to that certain point in your career where you're making the kind of money in which you can you can save that much money. Yeah, I guess when it comes down to it, every little bit counts. So when you see this $300 a month figure, don't let that intimidate you and just kind of throw in the bucket and say, I can't do anything at all, so why right. try? Right. What's next? So for the 35 year old, um, you have to save $775 a month in order to become a millionaire by the age of 65. Whoo! Ooh wee, it, it's a, it can be done. That's a rent. It can be done, <laughs> but you really, you really gotta live below your means. Instead of going and getting a new car, get a 10 year old car, pay in cash. You know, instead of getting that new dress every two months, get a new dress once a year. You know, uh, invest in your health. Make sure you're keeping your health in line. Reduce that bill. You have to nitpick and cut in certain places because your ultimate goal, keep a vision of the goal, is that you want to be millionaire status at some point in time. And some of you guys might take the bull by the horn and start saving so much that it ain't going to take you to 65 to be a millionaire. Just implement some of these strategies. Yeah, bottom line is pay yourself first. Set right. aside a little bit of money for mm -hmm. yourself for the future. Right. And the next two are astronomical, so I'm going to read through them. At age 45, you don't have anything saved. You've got to save $1,850 a month. And at age 55, because now you only got 10 years left, you've got to save $5,700 a month. Plain and simple, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to early. start <laughs> early, and if you want to join that elusive millionaire club, get better educated, uh, save money, cut costs, and if you've got enough money saved, you want to take a risk on a business that you know that's principled, that'll also help you get to that elusive millionaire status quickly as well. Question. Yes. Is a millionaire, I mean, a millionaire today isn't the same as it was, good, say, to Good years. observation. So good why observation. Is, is, is a millionaire what you're what you're striving for what should what should what, should, what we should be striving for well um you strive to make as much money as you can but this particular report was just basing on when you get to 65 you've got at least a million dollars in returnable assets that you could sustain a life on beyond 65 and be bringing in i think it was forty five hundred dollars a month okay and spendable income mm -hmm. so but, you know, once you get to that point, you can do what you want to do with your money. If you want to go blow it all at the strip club, if you want to go to Panama and lose it somewhere in there, it's up to you. We're just trying to implement strategies and show you guys ideas to help you make those gains in 2017. So if your goal isn't to be a millionaire by the age of 65, say you want to be a half millionaire and you feel like you can live off the rest of that for, your rest of your, for the rest of your life. 
your your goal of saving up every month won't be as high. Right. You can cut those numbers in half. So it just depends on what your goals are. If you want to be a, a two millionaire, then you know you have to save a little bit more. But I guess we're using a million as a standard. Right. Just want to show you guys a blueprint, a pathway to better quality of life in your financial accounts to help you guys not feel so hamstrung by creditors, debtors, and whoever else is going to come to try to take money from you. Make this year, 2017, the year where you anchor down your footing and you do something to increase your financial gain. So comment below. Let me know what are you guys going to do in 2017 to increase your financial status? Any closing words, honey? Nope, that's all. All right. I have nothing else. She, yeah, I'm just getting her introduced <laughs> to this whole thing, ladies and gentlemen. So bear with her. She's a sweet old thing, trust me. That's going to do it for this video, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Don't forget to like my video. Comment and subscribe. Go out there and get yourself a life game. Let us know what it is you're going to do to try to increase your financial bottom line in 2017. And until the next Sexy as Hell video, we will see you guys.